I have failed you, Elizabeth. We have failed you. I should have known that the Sons of War weren't plotting to take over. Elizabeth, can't you see all this Viking stuff is just evil? From my point of view, you're the one that's evil. Well, then you are lost. It's over, Elizabeth. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. Ah! You are the chosen one! do this. You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die. Think, Elizabeth. You were more than just my best friend. My lover. You were my fucking protege. And instead of taking everything I built for you, you threw it all away. Everyone and everything you know will be gone. After all this destruction, what do you think will still be left? Bonjour, mon fils. Encore en train de contempler l'horizon. Tu sais, cet endroit est une bénédiction pour ta mère et moi. On a travaillé dur pour bâtir cette humble communauté qui est la nôtre. Peut-être qu'un jour, toi aussi tu auras ta communauté. Tu auras ta famille. Oh non Attends ici I thought I told you to never come here. I still have the right to visit my kin. You've certainly grown since I last saw you, my grandson. I have seen your future. You will become a strong warrior, just like I was before my emotions got the better of me. History tends to repeat itself, my child. People with power will always rise and fall, and when you and your family defeat the devil himself, you will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Eventually, you'll either die a hero, or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. The end times are coming. Skigold, Skalmold, Skildir, Ro. Glofnir. That's enough! Leave him alone! Listen, my child, when your home burns, just like mine did, and you lose the ones you love, make your way to Danan. Your destiny will guide you there.
I'm looking for the one who goes by the name of Anderson. Who leads the Sons of War militia. A militia? I've heard of the motorcycle club, but not the militia. Hey Anderson, some crazy old lady here is looking for you. Do I know you, miss? You should. Your father probably warned you about me. Impossible. Shouldn't you be dead? I don't die so easily. But... I've been waiting for you, Anderson. Our families meet again at last. The circle is now complete. When I left your father, I was but a learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, Elizabeth. Is that what Alan told you? Or should I say... Seamus? What are you doing here? The very same reason you are. Running away from my past. I'm not your enemy, Anderson. Please, come with me. There's something we must discuss. I thought you were put behind bars. No prison can hold me. You know, I too was meant to be part of the Anderson family. I was going to be called Rachel. Well, maybe if you didn't stab my father in the back, that still would have happened. He left me no choice. He never listened to what I wanted. I still believe my actions were justified. You're crazy. The two of you had a great thing going. And you threw it all away for greed. Believe what you want, it doesn't change anything. I come to you asking a favor. My final request. Oh? And what would that be? Your father believed I was the chosen one. He wasn't entirely wrong. My grandson is the one from his vision. In time, he will find his way here. You will know he is mine because he will speak my native tongue, and will too decide to bear the marking of the scorpion. All I ask is that you look after him. You really believe all those visions you saw? Nurse hallucinations are a pathway to many abilities. Some consider to be... unnatural. And why should I believe you? Because he will restore what I had taken from the Sons of War. And make it stronger than ever before. Him and his kin will have dreams witnessing snow and death. Just like I did when your father confronted my newly found tribe. If what you say is true, then I will help him. Thank you. One last thing. Do you believe in reincarnation, Anderson? My beliefs are my own. Of course they are. Now go. Valhalla awaits me now. Freya will guide me there. Wait. What really happened in Amberino between you and my... We make, we a, make good a good team, team you and I. I, 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 I. A Celt, a Celt, Celt, Celt and a Viking. 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 So, Mr. Crest said we should talk about work, but not here. Is there a room in the back or something? Cool, I'll get set up.
Hey, Morrigan. You awake, lass? Our escape plan has finally arrived. And why are you up here? I wanted to have one last look at the city before saying goodbye to this place. San Andreas was where it all started for me. I know I traveled around since then, but I always felt like this was where I would stay. Do you remember much about your old home in Vietnam? You never told me what your mother and father were like. They were kind people. It's been so long now that it's hard to remember much about my old home. After they died, I would constantly have nightmares of seeing that place covered in snow, wandering around before eventually getting shot myself. Not until I killed the hound did those dreams stop. I... I have those types of nightmares too. You do? Well, not as frequent. Only since I met you did I start to have them. It must have been traumatizing for you. It was. I remember an old woman warning me that it was going to happen too. But no one believed her. My parents used to refer to her as the Outlander. I never knew why. Here, I think you deserve this. The Golden Revolver? But it's... yours. Anderson handed it down to me, and I'm handing it down to you. After all you've been through, all the courage you've shown, you deserve it. It's now yours. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Right. The plan is being set in motion. How are we getting out of San Andreas? Simple. We fly out. Oh, surely it can't be that simple. There must be a catch. There is. And don't call me Shirley. So what's the problem? Well, we want to make sure they can't track us again. At the very least, all of our records are wiped clean. Now, myself and Spider don't have access to that sort of shit. But we got in contact with someone who can. Only if we do a job for him. And who would that be? You know him as Codename Bogdan. The Russian guy you talked to in that submarine all those years back. How the hell did you get in contact with the Russians? Let's just say Spyra has some connections with the KGB. Being Russian herself, all General Bogdan asks is that we help break out his son from the penitentiary here in San Andres. Wait, so you're gonna get the Russians to hack into American systems just to wipe out our records? Wouldn't that start a whole new Cold War? Ah well, Trump and Putin can sort that one out. Nothing to do with me. Now, come on, this lad's waiting downstairs. So, Mr. Crest said you might be able to help me out with something. Well, not me, so that's clear. It's not me you're going to be helping. And I want to understood that I am not involved. Just a bystander doing a favor. 
And this is not an offer of employment so much as an opportunity. And well, anyway, that's just getting a bit technical. But the point is, sometimes our fair and legal justice system makes mistakes. And this is one such time. Here he is, Professor Maxim Rashkovsky. You know the professor? Used to be head of research for the army. Three doctorates, overconfident polymath, vain sociopath, tedious egomaniac, control freak, geneticist, weapons development, engineer, car nut, but definitely not a people person. Accused of espionage along with everything else? You don't remember? Well, lucky you. Exceedingly vain and self-absorbed man, brilliant at everything he does, yada yada yada, makes you want to puke. He's a goddamn traitor. I mean, he's a rat, but he pays. Incarcerated for a crime he did commit, but well, let's just say money talks and he's going to walk. So, we got a few things to get ready, all pretty straightforward. Do them one at a time, but any way you like. Standard op for a gov fact breakout, if you know what I mean. Rad. All right, first thing's a plane, then we got a bus, and th then, well, two things. We got the inmate transfer schedule and Rashkovsky's car. More on that later. Let me show you. We need a plane to get the professor out of the country. It's currently being used to traffic drugs by a transnational street gang, the Vagos. The bus. We need a standard Bolingbroke transport vehicle. The least traffic is on the route from Polito Bay. All right, that's where you're going to be able to get a hold of one. You can get a hard copy of the inmate transit schedule at the LSPD's Mission Row station. Go in unarmed, play it cool. You might not have a problem. That's a two-person job, max. The other two-hander is our guy's prize casco. We believe it's about to be shipped to Korea by a luxury car theft ring. Okay, Mr. Crest said you guys are at least semi-competent, so, well, Professor Reshkovsky pays well. Right, looks like we're going to need some uniforms and a prison bus. I can't get us a prison guard uniform. How are we going to get our hands on a prison bus? Actually, I stopped a prison bus a few days ago. I think it might still be there. Myself and Scorpio will break into the FIB building and get whatever files the bastards have on us. Give them to the Russians later. Are they the good Russians or the bad Russians? Well, they won't shoot us on sight if that's what you're asking. Lastly, the guy who helped you take down Trevor is going to help fund this little project. Go give him a visit. Here's an old friend there that you haven't seen in a long time. Hey, can you just hold it for a second, please? Boss, you got to visit him. Oh, yeah? That's who it is. Okay. <sighs> Sorry about that. I didn't know who you were. I won't make that mistake again. Justin here. Hey, what's cracking? So what you think about all this? Shit, we looking good, right? Look, this is our business. You feel me? You put the bread down, I'm the manager. Franklin Clinton, dawg. And that over there is my old ass homie Chop. Shit, he don't get around too much no more. Man, everybody I asked about setting this thing up, they all pointed straight at you. A genuine real reptable. 
Now me? Shit, I'm a hustler that made it big. Big house, nice cars, a family, and everything. But damn, man, I miss getting these fucking hands dirty. And from what I hear, you ain't got that problem. You run your own shit, and I like that. Hey, look, come walk with me. I want to show you something. Now the streets, I know real good, because that's where I'm from. But now I work with rich folk who got rich folk problems and no fucking idea how to deal with them. You know, like the kid might stole a car, or they might owe money to the wrong fucking people, or their wife might be screwing the tennis coach. But guess what? My homies can help them with all that. Now this here, this is your office. I'm going to get all these jobs for us, and they're going to show up on this computer right here. It'll be small fry at first, but one big client, man. One A-list name, and we straight. Hey. That's our hacker right there, Imani. And she works up on the operation floor where all the high-tech shit at. Oh, shit. Hey, Imani. Man, these kids, man. Knock, knock, my politically incorrect racial epithets. What that shit do? What are you doing here, Lamar? Nah, the question is, what are you doing here? Is that who you bringing in with you? Why you didn't tell me? I'm the one who called that pimp, put him up on everything, dawg. And you motherfuckers got the nerve to cut me out? Well, I got two words for y'all. Finders, motherfucking feet. That's right, I'm gonna sue y'all ass. Matter of fact, I'm gonna blast y'all asses out on Snapmatic. Where my phone Man, at? hold oh, on, shit. dawg. Man, I was gonna look out for you. Chill out, all right? Shit, I got something here. Dawg, come on. Ah, uh, nah, put that shit away. I'm part of San Andreas's budding cannabis scene. I remember this dude when he was broke as fuck. Could barely get a motherfucking coach seat. Now all of a sudden, eating grapes in the cockpit with the captain. Look at you. And you, I ain't even finna go in on your dog ass, cause you know what's happening, but I ain't tripping. Cause now, it's LD's turn to come up. How's that for a sample? Uh, okay, I see you. Look at this some good shit. You damn straight. That's that pie gal. All right. Hey, you get going on those. I'll be in my office, all right? Right. Hey, who is that badass little fist looking bitch? I, I mean, nice young lady with the profitable posterior right there. Nigga, that's Imani. That's Pearly, nigga, the homegirl's daughter. She handle all our hacker type shit. Ooh, that's Pearly daughter. I should have known. She hacking this shit too? I ain't even know they had a computer. Damn, I feel old. Tell me about it. You get going on those jobs. I'm gonna go work on this big client for us, all right? Wait, wait. You mean big, big client like Tony McTony? Come on, man. Tell me you got Tony McTony. Oh, see if Tony McTony will post my weed on this page, man. You got me, Frank? Come on, man. Whatever I got going, man, you got going. So I'm going to look out for you. Hey, I'll be in my office. You keep doing what you're doing. Man, he be lying like a motherfucker. Anyway, though, now look at you. You feel like somebody now, huh? You OG now. Your nuts is almost big as mine, but they won't be. Not at all. Got a bit of a problem. Some asshole got wind of what we were up to. Apparently killing a guy's closest associate puts a bit of a spotlight on him. <laughs> anyway, now I'm told they put a price on the professor's head, so we gotta move. Now. Is that clear? Can we get going? All right. And remember, the professor's paying you, not me. Not me at all. So keep him alive. Based on this inmate transfer schedule, Ballingbroke are expecting a new arrival. One of you is going to intercept the transport, make sure it doesn't get there. Two of you are going to be taking our prison bus and making your way into the facility in its place. You'll be playing inmate and guard. Stay in character as long as it's useful, then make your way to the rooftops. I'll get on the radio and give you a path to the prof. Meanwhile, the pilot will have picked up the plane and be waiting on the evac in the air. Whoever stole the bus will be bypassing the prison and torching it somewhere discreet. After that, it's just a matter of getting your guy out of the clink and getting him onto the plane. Everyone flies out of there except for the bus thief. Professor Reshkovsky takes control of the plane. The three of you on board take a jump. The professor's out of U.S. airspace and reunited with his precious car. Simple. Should be the easiest money you'll ever make. Speak soon. All right, Scully. After you activate your old ID, it won't be long until they realize who you are. Gotcha. I'll make sure the guns are ready. You got the bus? All right. Take it to Bowling Brook and avoid attention. 
This is it, Scorpio. After this, we're home free. This better go as planned. I hope so. You know, we always made a good team, you and I. You're coming up on Bolingbroke. Hold it together and they'll let you in. You've got clearance. Just one, huh? I thought the drug laws were keeping us full. Come on. Keep your cool. When they recognize us, we'll have to go guns blazing. How's that plane coming along, Morgan? I have it ready, but um, I'm still trying to get used to the controls. Don't worry, it's like riding a bicycle. You'll be grand. See you again. Hopefully, now go. Okay, get the plane out of there. Demolitions, keep with them. You need to evade the authorities before you bail out of there. Run evasive maneuvers, get clear, then head toward the drop zone. Oh, 
There was no collusion. I didn't know the president. Uh, there was nobody to collude with. People came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Where is the server? I want to know where is the server and what is the server saying? Question from Mr. Putin. We believe the individuals involved were part of the notorious motorcycle club known as Sons of War. One member, XKDB, referred to as Spider, who recently fled back to Russia. Would you, or the Russian government, have any traces of the location of her other accomplices? Hey mom, I'm home. You haven't picked up the phone for nearly two years. Have me worried sick and now I just come back after all the... I told you I'd bring him back. Val? Shannon. I think I should leave you two here for a chat. Uh, I'm gonna go back and check my room. I'm gonna go check, see if you got any whiskey about. You know, I'll make myself feel at home. I thought you might have been dead. You should know that I don't die that easily. Is it all over? They've all been dealt with. And what about the club? We'll just have to wait and see. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the pain The only thing that's real The needle tears a hole The old familiar sting Try to kill it all away but I remember everything What have I become? My sweetest friend Everyone I know Goes away in the end And you could have
I wear this crown of thorns upon my liar's chair, full of broken thoughts. I cannot repair beneath the stains of time. The feeling disappear. You are someone else. I am still right here. What have I become? My sweetest friend, everyone I know goes away in the end, and you could have it all. My empire of dirt, I will let you down. If I could start again, a million miles away, I would keep myself. I would find a way. I was just seeing if you were okay. I'm good. I actually was checking up on the Sons of War Instagram page. Instagram? Yeah, you probably wouldn't have a clue, but basically all those MCs in San Andreas used to talk shit online. I was thinking that since he pretty much closed down, perhaps you might have some things you want to say to the community before we go? Sure. Alright, let me get the camera and microphone rolling. You're live now. Being a biker years ago actually meant something. We had our codes, our honor, our spirit. But no one cares about that anymore. This community of ours is finally dead. We have allowed the people above us to control who we were, to make us hate each other, to boast our egos. So much has changed since I was first part of this community. I was young, naive, reckless. But even now, I see everyone around me doing far worse than I have ever done. All the backstabbing and petty fighting has destroyed the spirit of the MC community. Clubs weren't about all this. They were about friends and family. People having each other's back and helping each other. I hope that in time, this community will go back to the way it used to be. But for now, this is Scorpio, officially stating that the Sons of War Motorcycle Club has disbanded. Goodbye. That was really good. Thanks. Now come on. I think your mother has dinner ready downstairs. It's hard to believe how much the past affects the present. If it wasn't for Seamus, Podgy and Anderson, we wouldn't all be sitting here now. Yeah, I remember my father telling me some crazy stories. I could hardly believe half of them. He actually told me that uh, Elizabeth Page found him in Vietnam once, if you can believe that. Fuck off. That two-faced psycho. I thought she was sent to prison. Apparently after her and Seamus got their identities changed, Elizabeth tried overthrowing the Sons of War with her own ideologies, leaving Seamus with no choice but to take action and stop what she had started. Seamus captured her and turned her in. Well... Marshal Alan Anderson captured her and turned her in. 
At this point, Seamus Brennan was rumoured dead after the Battle of Fort Mercer. Shotgun cartridge to his upper back. The old switcheroo, huh? Look at the struggle we went through to keep under the radar, and that lucky prick just had to change his name. Still doesn't explain how Elizabeth ended up in Vietnam, though. Well, I'm not entirely sure either. I just remember that my dad said that she was there, for the same reason that he was, running away from her past. I always wondered what it was that Anderson did. I remember him talking about a deal he made to keep his family safe. I heard that too. I'm just as surprised he got mixed up with men like them. So he never told you? A few years after Seamus fled under his new name, federal agents realized who he was with his new identity. But they couldn't do anything, since he wasn't in the United States. After he died and my father came back down to America, that newly formed group of government officials got in touch with him shortly after the Second World War. Basically used him like a puppet with the information they had on his father. So what was this deal he spoke about? The deal? They had him assassinate John F. Kennedy. You there, Anderson? The car is approaching our location. I'm up in the building now. I can't believe you guys have already planned to pin this on that Oswald guy. Don't ask too many questions. And do as we ask. We don't want to blow this operation. I know this will just continue your petty war in Vietnam. But all I care about is the safety of my kids and their future. And they'll be safe. You have our word, Mr. Anderson. Kennedy should be in your last sight now. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. It's done. The president's dead. You hear me? John Fitzgerald Kennedy is dead. You have given me a hearing without legal representation or anything. I didn't shoot anybody, no, sir. Has, has, has the gentleman been identified? Yes, sir. He's been identified for killing the officer. Right. Has any identification been attempted for the killing of the president? Not yet. In Dallas, the prime suspect still is being questioned. He is 24-year-old Lee Oswald of Dallas, a former Marine who spent some time in Russia, who at one time had applied for Soviet citizenship. Yeah, yeah. Captain Fritz. There is the president. There is Lee Oswald. He's been shot. He's been shot. Lee Oswald has been shot. So, we finally did it, huh? It appears so. I was thinking earlier, if you were, you know, ever considering about getting rid of that scorpion tattoo, I might know someone who could, uh, remove it. Ah, uh, what? But that tattoo symbolizes who he is, though. I know, I know, I was just saying. Anyways, what's next for us? We just stay in a North Yachton. Nothing wrong with lifting the feet up. We definitely deserve a break. I suppose all the losings have been dealt with. Trevor, the Hound, Napoleon, all of our criminal records were wiped clean. We finally have a fresh new beginning. But people still know who we are. What about all the biker gangs in San Andreas that want to kill us? Asher Morrigan. Most of those gangs are going to be disbanded within the next few months. They're probably shooting each other right now as we speak. New clubs will take their place soon enough. It's only a matter of time. Then maybe we should wait, you know, before rebuilding. But where would we go? What? About Liberty City, where you guys first met? 
Or what about Los Venturas? I'm a fucking legend of poker. San Fierro? Eh, it's not a bad shout out either, to be honest. Oh wait, Vice City. I can be laying on the beach chatting up all the babes. Actually, didn't Apollyon mention that the last stash of Confederate gold was in Vice City? The same gold used to make our family revolver. Confederate gold, huh? We'd be like headless chickens looking for that unless we had a proper lead. I might be able to get in contact with someone. Imagine how rich we'd be! No one, and I mean no one, would be able to touch us. Wherever we decide to go, we better make a good plan first. We'll need some new prospects, bikes, clubhouse location. Sounds good to me. So, where are we going? Three and a half years. Three and a half years I've been working on this. And this... It's finally at its end. It's finally done. You know, I... When the odds were against me, I actually went out and did it. I... You know, when... When everyone thought that this wasn't gonna ever be a thing, that this was never gonna be finished, even from the very beginning, from season one, and even trying to start off season two, like, I pushed myself so much just to get this out there, to get something out of this. And I'm kind of happy where it is. You know, I mean, it's in a position where I think there's a misconception where I'm definitely going to bring it back. Like, I don't have to bring back Sons of War. This could be the ending. This could be it. Like, I mean, it's in a place where it's completely comfortable, the characters are safe, and there's no plot holes at the moment. At least none that I can think of that I haven't covered. Um, yeah, I just think that whenever Rockstar decide to release GTA 6, then there is potential to continue the story if I do want to bring in another season, but... I could just leave it the way it is and just go on with other things. I mean, I have the Enclave at the moment on Fallout 76 that I've definitely neglected for quite a while and I'm going to have to uh, get back on that one. Uh, we might go somewhere with that, who knows. You know, when you're all the way down there, when, you've, when you're at fucking ground zero and I remember just helping other MCs and then being part of, like, so much fucking shit that was going on in the community, especially during, like, 2016 and 2017 on the Xbox One, it just... it just made me realise how much I was so fed up with how things were, and I just... when I did Season 1, I just really wanted to bring things back to the way it was on Xbox 360, on those servers, and how chill back it was back in like the good old days to my childhood like i was 15 years old when gta came out when gta 5 came out i was only 15 i'm 23 now like i've been playing this game for eight and a half years i think it's time to fucking stop it's time to give the whole thing a break but even even when i did get sons of war up off its feet when i started doing these videos and actually getting content and getting views and then getting noticed. Um, I just, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. I didn't know what would have came. And when I say that when you're down here all the time, when you're just part of a nobody club and you have no attention whatsoever, when you get that attention, when you get up there, when you get noticed and when you start getting... I suppose some sort of fan base. Sometimes you realise it's not exactly what you bargained for. You're going to come across a vast majority of fucking 
ass kissing motherfuckers and it's a lot of it is heartbreaking and look look I'm not going to go into like nitty bitty details I don't want people to have pity or any fucking shit like that I mean I've had my fair share of goods and bads and I really just don't care anymore I honestly, one of the big things why I even started this series was on the backbone of grudges, season one and season two, and it's why I really do want to take a break from GTA, because I realise even looking back on a lot of this of how childish that behaviour can be, and that I don't want to constantly let my creative writing and my storytelling be told on the backbone of grudges. Like, I want to be able to express different ideas and move forward in different directions. And the thing is, even if I do bring Sons of War back into GTA 6, it's like, people constantly think because we're well-known and we have, like, series and videos to back up who we are and our clubs and our, our, you know, our identity, that we have all the answers, when in reality we don't. I'm going to tell you right now, I since I've gotten to where I am now, I've met most of these big fucking MCs. Now, there's a handful, I will say, are fairly okay, but a lot of them are fucking egomaniac pieces of shit. And I just know that if I bring Sons of War back, I know what I must do, and I honestly don't know if I even want that. You know, I mean, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. (laughs) I know if, if that's really something I want for Sons of War, I need to be fucking prepared to stand up for it. But anyway, I am very appreciative of how things have turned out, and I'm really glad to have finally ended this series. So, that's it. I'm, I'm done. Let's move on to something else and... You know what, I think it's now time to just uninstall GTA. I've played the game for eight and a half years. I think it's definitely gone past its sell-by date. Just, I just want to give the game a rest. It's fucking over. You're probably wondering as well, if I do bring this back to GTA 6, do I have any ideas of what I'm going to do? Well, there's definitely one idea I want to go for. 